right there. Ah, that's better. Welcome back to Let's Play Road to Gehenna, the DLC chapter for the Talos Principle. I'm Burning Dog Face, and we're down here in Crater. That's about the only thing I ever managed to figure out down here. So... I guess we're caught up. Let's try this side. Well, if I don't need that... Oh. Embarrassing. That side's blue, too. Fair enough! Well, then let's go get some, uh... Blue on that. And there's a blue. A blue, blue, blue. Hmm. All right, this is clearly the bat wrong place to start. Dick. I've only found one blue generator so far. And it's in an area with no connectors. Hmm. I'll try closing this. to get the uh, blue into that. That would solve a lot of problems. Yoink. Yeah. Last time we had a conversation with the moderators of this place. Uh, yeah, right there. Then we... There was a third, there was a, a second thing before the most memorable thing. Mm. Well, whatever that was, we went and found 401's long lost file, which turned out to be uh, a text adventure called Sirius Sam the Text Encounter. Okay, that's a thing. Okay. Oops. Fuck. Wait. I mean, that's what I thought about that. I think I can get around that. My own placement, I mean. Oh, that's right, he 
gravitated past the uh, portal to make sure that I didn't try anything funny. Pretty much the only thing I really can use this for. You know, if I reversed this setup. Let me go take a look at something. No, it isn't in here. The star is over there somewhere. Okay. Time to activate the thingy and, uh... Wow. That's a long ass laser. Yoink. That felt good. Okay, good, good. So I can free him now. Open sesame! Bye, Asmodeus. You know, mods, if they really didn't want to leave, they could just stay here in their cell. Uriel, read this now. Or oh, this is the thread about me. Uh, here we go. Mr. Mulciber. Orc, Borg, and myself recently took it upon ourselves to contact Uriel directly to ascertain what threat his actions pose to Gehenna and its citizens. Mr. Mulciber, the first thing Uriel expressed to us was how much your creative endeavors in Gehenna had moved him. Borg. Initially, he was reasonably cooperative, discussing openly his impressions of Gehenna since arriving here. Mr. Mulciber, he did seem to truly believe that our world was under threat and that by evacuating us, as he put, to put it, he was somehow saving us. But who is to say that his fears are well-founded? Borg. It is further worth noting that Uriel displayed a high level of curiosity as regards our inner workings, to what end we have not yet ascertained. Mr. Mulciber. All of this leaves us in a difficult position. We understand that some of you may wish to take your chances and uh, join Uriel wherever he is going. Orc. But our primary responsibility remains ensuring that Gehenna still stands for those who wish to stay. Borg. The most we can do is share with you what we know, as we have now done, and await your responses before considering our next move. A dream of Eru. That was... That was a concept they brought up a lot in the... text logs from the main game. The, uh, the ancient Egyptian story about the dying man and the mystic. Uh, Eru is what they called the... the afterlife. The blacksmith. Just post the thing. Okay, uh... If there is... in the, ca in the case that it does remove this from the menu. I will, uh... <laughs> I'll use the ghetto implementation of using Windows Media Player 
to look at the screenshot from when all that text is on screen and read it then. Close your eyes, A Dream of Eru. Credits. Written by the blacksmith, inspired by the book of the scribe of Osiris. Create a system or be enslaved by another man's dream. The last thing you remember is a great block of stone falling towards you, its dark shape blotting out the, to the sun, and a single thought racing through your mind. All this just to build a tomb? But now the pyramid is gone, and so are the other slaves. You are all alone in what appears to be an endless desert. Start walking. You start walking across the desert. The sun is glaring, but you feel no heat. You look down at your feet and see that you have no shadow. The latter is particularly disquieting. You feel as if you are no longer attached, uh, anchored to the world. Pray or keep walking. I want to know what happens if you pray. You fall to your knees and beseech the gods. Osiris, foremost of the Westerners. Hathor, mistress of the West. Hades, receiver of all. Uh, he, he doesn't belong with those ones. Hear my prayer. Something enormous starts crawling out of the sand before you. Wait for it to rise. From the depths of the sand rises a golden beast of many limbs. Its body greater than any man, its claws sharper than any sword. I am the Scorpion, it says in a terrible voice. Ask for help. Your old life has ended, the Scorpion says. You are now in the Duat, the land of the Westerners. A great and difficult journey lies before you. If you face its challenges, you will reach the reed fields of Osiris, where your Ka shall be reunited with your Ba. That's right, your Ka is your soul, and your Ba is your body. If not, your soul will be destroyed forever. Having shared its wisdom, the scorpion vanishes under the sand once more. Walk towards paradise. After walking for a very long time, you come upon a vast wall of iron, stretching from horizon to horizon. There is only one opening, a gleaming gate of light. The, the gate is guarded by a mysterious figure. Approach. The Guardian is a creature with the body of a man and the head of a crocodile. Its skin is purest black, surrounded by a halo of purest white. I am the god Sobel, master of crocodiles, it intones. I want to say that's actually Sobek, but I don't know the Egyptian mythology very well, and I would not be surprised to find out there's more than one. Uh, I ruled in Shedat when the world was young, or Shedat when the world was young. Within me flows the eternal river. Answer my riddle, and I shall let you pass. Agree. Tell me then, morning. Uh, mortal, what crawls in the morning, walks at noon, and limps at night? A human. Correct, you may pass, says the crocodilian god, and steps aside. The barrier of light fades, and the gate is now open to you. That's... I believe that was one of the riddles of the Sphinx. Uh, although it was originally put as... Uh, it was it was made more difficult because it was worded as what walks on four legs, two legs, three legs. So the idea is a... in the morning of his life a human walk <clears throat> crawls on all fours because he's a baby. In no at noon, in the middle of his life a human walks on two feet, upright, and, uh, towards the end of his life, at night, a human, uh, you know, shuffles along on two feet and needs a, uh, a cane to help support him. Four legs, two legs, three legs. Step through the gate. As you step through the gate, the ancient god raises his hands to the sky. From his mouth bursts forth the eternal river, drenching the land and water. The waves carry you away. Fight to stay afloat or let the water take me. Let the water take me. You let go of fear and accept that this is the god's way of guiding you to a new land. The water surrounds you, overwhelms you, but you do not drown. Under the water, you see sights of astonishing beauty. Glowing fish with metal eyes drowned cities full of smiling people, lost gods waiting for the day of awakening. How sad it would have been to stay above water and miss all this. After a long time, you find yourself washed up on a new shore. Look around. The eternal river has brought life to the desert. Everything is green now. Palm trees sprout from the ground, casting pleasant shade in the grass. Lizards come crawling in from the desert, eager to catch the very colored dragonflies it buzz about. 
A soft wind blows in the west. Start walking or rest in the shade. Start walking! Are you sure you don't want to rest? You are very tired. Continue the journey! You walk along the banks of the Eternal River, snaking its way through the endless desert. You feel strangely at peace. After some time, as the sun is setting, you come to a city built on the riverbank. Smiling people come out to greet you and bid you welcome. You are led to the town square, where a great feast is prepared. There is roasted fish and olives and dates and honey and many other wonderful delicacies. Where am I, or just enjoy the feast? Where am I? My friend, an elder says, you are in the beautiful city of Barzak. We, the souls you no longer seek the way to Eru, have gathered here to live in peace. Do you see that gleaming spire in the far distance? You do. That is the Pyramid of Ian, where the souls of the dead are judged. Only the worthy are allowed into Eru. But to get there, you must cross the terrible desert. Why not stay here, by the Eternal River? Happiness is more important than salvation. Stay here or keep going? Keep going. You tell the Elder that you appreciate the offer, but you can't stay. Salvation matters to you more than happiness, because true happiness cannot exist without salvation. Head towards the Pyramid. You keep walking through the desert, unwilling to give up hope. Time passes, but you cannot tell how much. You grow weak and exhausted. Sometimes you feel as if you're losing your grip. One day you come across a head in the sand. Talk to head or kick head? Talk to head. Hi, my name is, um, Jeff. Oh, God. It's fucking Jeff. It's Jeff Goldblum. Hi, my name is, um, Jeff. I am, uh, trapped here, you see. In the sand. Ask how he ended up here. I was, uh, so preoccupied with whether I could that, um... I didn't consider whether I... I didn't consider, um, whether I should bury myself in the sand. I just wanted to see what would, um, happen. An experiment, if you will. An attempt at discovering, um, something. Unbury head. You dig in the sand with your fingers. It's not easy, but after some time you have freed the head. However, what's underneath its neck is not what you expected. There is no body. There is only another head. And another, and another, all the way down. This si strange sight unsettles you enough to revive you a little. You decide to press on towards the pyramid. Continue your journey. You come upon another great wall of iron, the last one separating you from the Pyramid of Ian, where your soul will be judged. The Gate of Light is guarded by a gigantic snake, whose movements cause the earth to shudder. I am Apophis, it says, the eater of souls. One day I shall devour the sun, and all the world shall be mine. But today I shall devour you, and you shall become nothing. Fight Apophis, surrender to Apophis, or laugh at Apophis. Oh, wow. Laugh at Apophis. You start laughing at the snake's arrogance. I mean, come on, the Eater of Souls? That's just silly. What? How dare you laugh at me? I am the Lord of Chaos! Pfft. How can Chaos have a Lord when it's the very opposite of order? I am the World Encircler, the Serpent of Darkness, the Eternal Enemy. As you keep laughing, the snake starts fading, until all that's left of it is a vague shadow. You step right through it, still giggling. It makes an annoyed sound, but has no power over you. Darkness never lasts when you laugh in its face, huh? I don't know, someone would be very pleased to hear that. Head for the Pyramid! At long last you have arrived. Beyond the Pyramid of Ian lie the reed fields of Osiris. A hidden gate in the stone opens, beckoning you forward. Step inside. You enter a dark room, lit only by a flickering candle. Holding the candle in one hand is a creature with the body of a man and the head of a jackal. That's not good. In its other hand, it holds a set of scales. Come and be judged. Let Anubis judge me. You have struggled much in your life. There are many harsh memories within you. And I see wounds that may never fully heal. You have many ideas, many hopes, many dreams. You are not pure. 
Your soul is not light enough. You may not enter Eru. Accept this judgment or walk past Anubis. I choose hope. Anubis protests, but you just walk by him. After what you've been through, you're not going to let some self-righteous doghead stop you from reaching paradise. You cannot do this! It is forbidden! Oh, really? Enter Eru. The vast reed fields stretch before you. All is quiet. All is serene. There are no pyramids. No walls of iron or gates of light. No gods. Here, you are free. The end. Well, I can certainly see how, uh... Someone who had only encountered Elohim would, uh, write that. What an interesting story. I opened my eyes. Congratulations for exploring this user-created world and entering Eru. Your profile status has increased from 6 respected contributor to 7, creative. You have received one thread creation token. This will be available to you the next time you log in. Kaiju. Oh, wow, a new The Blacksmith experience. Exciting. Lilith, I wish I could get you to answer some questions about your work. This is so full of evocative scenes. Mac. <clears throat> Love it. You are the best. I wish I could do a fraction of what you can. Sam. Enjoyment equals true. Knave. Gotta agree with Sam there. What a trip. I'm gonna play this again. Frankenstein. Has some weird references to previous works that are not entirely appropriate. Still excellent. 7 out of 10. Lamb. You are a genius. Are you sure you don't want to participate in forum discussions? Gehenna could use more of your thoughts. Asmodeus, plus one. Rockwell, is there a hidden meaning? Uh, Mr. Mulsiver, deeply impressed once again. Can't wait for the next one. 401, made me lol. Well. I guess uh, that'll do it for this episode. I'm Burning Dogface, and this has been Let's Play Road to Gehenna, the DLC chapter for the Talos Principle. I'll see you next time when you look at this uh, th thread here, and then go about trying to get that star in Crater. Later!